So, it's 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 time for my nomination. Um, remember, guys, we got Brandy into the Hall of Fame already, so I'm good. But <laughs> it's my turn again, and this time I want to nominate. And this guy just put out a documentary the other day. He's oh been the fa- he's been the face of R&B for many many years now. No. He's also related to one Ed Bowser who's on this podcast no. right now. <laughs> With hits such as Run It, Kiss Kiss, With You, <laughs> and Tom's favorite song, These Hoes Ain't Loyal, I'd like to nominate Christopher <laughs> Maurice Brown. Oh my god. Let me ask you a serious question. How many timeless hits does this guy have? <sighs> I am... And Anyone? I'm not, and listen, I am not going to be, even though we're talking about family here, I am pretty unbiased when it comes to talking about old cousin Chris. But I will say, I wouldn't call him timeless, but he definitely has some memorable songs there. That is the least of his problems. Well, I was more so saying how many hits were just for the moment and how many were actually songs that will stand the test of time. Like when you play "Loyal" in twenty years, it's gonna—he can't even perform that sh- that song in twenty years. I mean, it's oh, just no, gonna sound so not. horrible. So what I mean is like more so that. I mean, you go ahead. You state your case. Who, me or Tom? I'm or Kyle. You go. Because I'm you gonna need some ahead. time to process. All right, Kyle. Defend, you want to defend your? Co- well, no. Let's let Ed defend his cousin on this one. <clears throat> Why do I have to defend my dumb old cousin? All right. Listen, when it comes to sales and when it comes to impact to an R&B in this generation, for the past 10 or so years, probably a little over that, probably 12, 13 years, like it or not, he's been the face of R&B. He has platinum success all over the place. And he has been, of course, compared to Michael Jackson just because of the dancing. And he has successfully crossed over into pop. And this is just... If we just over, if we stick strictly to the music and overlook his extracurricular activities, which is making my veins bulge out of my head just thinking about it. But if we're looking at just his impact, when it comes to R and B, if you name someone, if you go to someone probably under twenty and ask them to name a male R and B singer, nine times out of ten they're gonna say Cousin Chris because he is the standard bearer right now. Especially for that generation. However, even though he has been the standard bearer, and I would say he has been influential, playing his songs are some hot garbage. It's been some garbage albums. Even though they've sold well, them things have been whack. This probably I don't think I've rated a Chris Brown album higher than three and a half stars. And his <laughs> debut is like the best by far. Like, it's like on another league compared to these albums. Most of these albums are unlistenable. (sighs) But if we're going by influence, if we're going on sales, he should be in there. But I'm saying no because so much of his impact, his, like, biggest hits have been more pop anyway. So that's going to be my out. Plus, I don't want to put him in because it gives him my last nerve. So, No. Dude, if you put him in, I was about to tear up the whole grilled chicken studios <laughs> real quick. <laughs> well, listen, I'm being an unbiased reviewer because I am unbiased. <laughs> but this is kind of what I was talking to Kyle about last last podcast. I think it was. Um, it's almost like it's not fair to categorize this stuff. Like it's not fair to put him in the same category as a Charlie Wilson. They're not making the same music, you know. So it's almost. Like, R&B has become such a generic term. We like to place everyone in a box that sings. But I don't think they're all the, really the same genre, these artists that are making music. So that's my outlook on it. Well, it's always been like that. And that's always kind of been the struggle because it always I always laugh on Twitter when people have their arguments about who is R&B and who isn't because they're like, Janet is R&B. Like, 90% of Janet's stuff is pop. She made, like, two R&B albums. The rest of her stuff is pop. R&B fans claim Michael Jackson and he outright said he's the king of pop. But then there'll be R&B artists that we don't like 
Like, we get mad at Robin Thicke because he does dumb stuff. And they're like, oh, he isn't R&B anymore. Well, yeah, he is. You just don't like him anymore. So I think there are different levels of R&B. There is the more traditional sound that a Charlie Wilson has. And then there's a more youthful sound. Because Jodeci don't sound like Charlie Wilson. And he doesn't sound like Missy when she does R&B. There are different levels. But when we're talking about Chris Brown, most of his most successful stuff has been pop and has been dance. Like, that's where he really created the lane. And when we talk about R&B kind of losing its way and getting too dancey and too hip hoppy, you can blame a lot of that on him because he was the one that, again, when we talk about influence, he was the one that was like, let's step away from the old sound and just make everything EDM. And there you go. Now we got Pitbull on every song. <laughs> Um, Ed, on this podcast, we we, we refer to Pitbo as Hit Bull because he makes hits. I'm going to refer to you as Hit Bull because you're about to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, I assume it's a no for you as well? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a no. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't even try to explain it. Just no. <laughs> I mean, well, just being unbiased, he has a very strong case to be in it. Like, just being real. Well, well, if one of us he didn't well, if what he didn't do anything to advance the genre though. I mean, if you think about it, what did he do to? All he did was tear it apart. Well, he advanced the genre, but that's but that's you know in the eye of the beholder. I agree, he tore it apart. But some people might say he was the only one that kept it relevant when it wasn't relevant anymore. It's like hip hop fans who are like Nicki Minaj is the only person who was keeping female rap alive. Like she was this because she was the only female rapper. Everybody else didn't have the stage, but she's garbage. So, yes, he kind of did terrible things, but then he, again, he did advance it. So, again, it's an eye behold. I agree with you, though. He put us down this downward spiral, but the man is successful. Well, if one of us is going to be uh, sipping that good stuff and not that haterade, I guess it's going to be me. Oh, boy. Yeah, what good I stuff is you. that? Kool-Aid? Yep, it's Kool Aid. No sugar, no sugar though, because diabetes is bad for you. But uh, <laughs> oh God. that's my State guy your right case, there. Please, that's my boy. Oh, both of you are pitiful. How did this thing stay afloat while I was gone? <laughs> Let me just say this about Chris Brown. I mean, he's a yes for me because, first of all, his debut album is a modern day classic. I don't care what either of you guys say. If we're talking about today's generation, that is a modern day classic. My God. You are wrong, though. I've had a lot of people say that from your generation. A lot of people, that is like one of their classic albums. Yep. They're wrong, but proceed. the, The other thing you have to look at with Chris Brown is his longevity. Along with the amount of music he's put out over the years, he's on what album? Like, let me count here. I think he's on like album album eight now or album nine, and he's still. I mean, he's slowed down. I think the last year and a half, but his run has been more remarkable than any artist I've seen, probably since Usher, to be honest. And the the one knock on Chris Brown for me, aside from the fact that he doesn't really have a classic album, maybe except his first one, is you're right, Ed. Most of his bigger hits have been more poppy, but. I have a soft spot for him because every so often he'll put out a traditional R&B song and it'll be good and it'll actually do well on the charts. Like how many people can say that in, to, in, in 2017? Right. So, I'll agree with you there. I mean, again, I'm, I'm with you, Ed. He doesn't have a classic album, but I mean, this is a tough one for me. This is Chris Brown. Oh, please. I mean, it's, he has a great argument to be in, but... No, not on my watch. And we talk about, oh, he has a great discography and 9 or 10 albums. Well, if you got 9 or 10 albums and 8 of them are doo-doo, that says more <laughs> about you than if you had 3 solid albums. And we always, we hear fans talk about like D'Angelo, who has like literally 3 albums. And we say, oh, well, he should have given us more. But I would take 3 solid albums and 17 garbage. Well, and then the last point I'll make... Name another artist who's as versatile as Chris Brown, who can collaborate with Pitbull, to 50 Cent, 
to the Migos, to the great Aaliyah, like, how many artists can do that? How many artists can make a record with Aaliyah in 2015 and 16? First of all, um, Aaliyah didn't have any choice in that collaboration. That's not. I was fair. please oh. get him, Tom. Get <laughs> get him, Tom, because I was about to get up in his rectum for that. <laughs> Jeez, did a song with Aaliyah. I can do a song with Aaliyah if I sing over "Age Ain't Nothing But a Number." Please, <laughs> can we hear that, please? No, no, we don't. <laughs> We're trying to retain listeners, not run them off. <laughs> all right, so. Two nominations, no inductions. Tamia, tough blow to Canada, but you're not in. And sorry, Ed, VA will have to wait for another induction. We will be good as we slip our, sip our slurpees. We ain't worrying about cousin Chris. We ain't worrying about cousin Chris. 